I don't know if any of you believe in past lives, but when, as a teenager, I read the Claudine novels by Colette, I thought, my God, this could be me. Claudine was, in many ways, the embodiment of the world's first teenager. She was rebellious and wary of grown-ups. She resisted growing up even though she was very provocative and precocious, both intellectually and sexually. And this was long before Lolita, I might say. <laughs> I had a divine homesickness for Paris before I'd even been there. And when I finally lived there, Paris magnified this divine homesickness. I craved artistic belonging, and I, I wondered if I'd ever live up to the standards set by the city's artists, writers and musicians. Their ghosts seemed to taunt me. One day, I was walking down the Rue du Fleurus, and I saw a sign that said, Gertrude Stein lived here. <laughs> the sign also said, Gertrude Stein lived here with Alice B. Toklas, her wife. From the cookbook of Alice B. Toklas, fried frog's legs, Marinate for one hour 100 frog's legs in a cup of olive oil and a teaspoon of salt, turning frequently. <laughs> Drain well and wipe dry, cover with batter, and fry. Gertrude Stein was not a slim woman. <laughs> yep, Alice was Gertrude's wife, pretty outrageous for 1910. But then again, so was her recipe for hash cookies. <laughs> Gertrude Stein wrote Alice's autobiography. Very kind of her, indeed. <laughs> so you can see from this that the custom of husbands speaking on behalf of their wives was alive and well in Parisian lesbian circles in 1910. <laughs> in chapter one, Gertrude Stein has Alice say the following. Only three times in my life have I met a genius, and each time a bell within me rang, and I was not mistaken. The first genius that I met was Gertrude Stein. <laughs> Can you imagine the soirees in their homes, filled with those intent on breaking taboo? Artists, Cézanne, Matisse, Gris, Braque, writers, Ernest Hemingway. Henry Miller, James Joyce, Scott Fitzgerald, Juna Barnes, Marcel Proust, T.S. Eliot, Apollinaire, the list goes on. The wives will all go off with Alice. And Gertrude Stein, a brilliant conversationist with a Roman senator's haircut, would take the men off to the parlor to discuss art and philosophy. Now, one of those men was Picasso. And Gertrude and Alice kept him alive by buying his works when no one else would. Picasso, in the words of Peggy Guggenheim at the time, an ugly little egotistical misogynistic maniac. <laughs> ah, genius. In my words, a perfect blend of Hispanic passion and Parisian elegance, freedom of thought and manicured violence.
for me came the icing on the Parisian cake, or should I say, gâteau? <laughs> Through Alain Marion, I was able to have some lessons and be in the company of Jean-Pierre Rampal, the greatest flute player in the world. And he was like the Sun King, elegant, extravagant, larger than life, and sexy too. And he encouraged all his students to be sexy about music, food, life, everything. He used to drive around central Paris in a Fiat Bambino whose two front seats had been replaced by a small couch. <laughs> in lessons, he would pick up his flute and play something, a piece, that he must have played at least 50,000 times, and he would play it with all the wonderment of a child watching a flower open for the first time, or with all the sensuality of a, of a first kiss, and to listen to the narrative of his wonderful golden sound. Oh, it's just like falling in love, a story that you never wanted to end. He once said to me, Jane, tu sais, tu peux être audacieux, ou très même. Tu, tu peux jouer ce morceau comme une femme de petite vertu which means um, you can be a bit outrageous, you know, when you play. You can, you can play like une femme de petite vertu. And I, I said, oui, mais je ne vois pas exactement ce que cela veut dire, jouer comme une femme de petite vertu. I, I don't really understand what you mean, to play like une femme de petite vertu. And he said to me, oh, Jane, you want to know, I will tell you. He was very charming and a bit of a ladies' man. He said, I would tell you what it means. It means you must play like a war. <laughs> Spelled W-H-O-R-E. <laughs> Even though he recorded and edited so much flute music, it's so French that the greatest flute player in the world didn't ever write any books about the flute. But he did write one about sushi. <laughs> he once forced me to try raw sea urchin by saying to me, if you don't like this, you will never ever be a great musician and I'm sorry for your boyfriend because you must be a lousy lover. <laughs> for me, it was like lying at Manly Pier with my mouth open at low tide. <laughs> It's, a, it's an acquired taste. <laughs> Jane, you want to know how I can eat so very much and still remain so comfortable? Look, expandable belt. <laughs> you know, I have, I have two wardrobes. Yes, one for when I am fat, and another one for when I am getting fat. <laughs> Thank you.